When we look at where people live around the world, we see patterns in how communities form. Some grow in straight lines, some are spread out, and some are close together. Let's dive into these patterns, look at their advantages and disadvantages, and try to understand why they form the way they do. First, let's talk about linear settlement. These are places where homes and businesses line up along something important, like a river, a coastline, or a major road. An example is how towns have grown along the Nile River in Egypt. People in linear settlements can easily access transportation, they have a steady supply of water or resources from the feature they're settled around, and they often have strong community bonds because they're all close together. On the downside, they might run out of space to grow, and if something bad happens to the feature they rely on, like a river getting polluted, it affects everyone. Then we have scattered settlements. Here, houses and communities are spread out, often because of farming. Think about the big farms in Australia or the USA's Midwest. People in these settlements often have lots of land, less competition for local resources, and the freedom to use their land however they want. However, they might have a harder time getting to shops, hospitals, or schools because everything is so spread out. They might also feel more isolated from neighbors or their larger community. Lastly, we've got clustered settlements, where lots of people live close together in a small area. Big cities like Mumbai or New York are like this. The good thing is, everything's nearby. Shops, schools, jobs. Because so many people are around, there are also more chances to find work or start a business. However, there are downsides too. With so many people in one place, it can get crowded. Cities have to work hard to manage waste, keep things clean, and make sure there's enough water and food for everyone. Plus, with so many people looking for jobs or services, there can be a lot of competition. These patterns can look a bit different depending on where you are in the world. For example, a clustered city in Europe might be full of history and culture, but might also struggle to fit modern buildings among the old ones. A linear settlement in Africa, near a fresh water source, will have plenty of water. But if there's a drought and the water source dries up, they might face challenges. In big plains like Canada, scattered communities can enjoy the beauty and quiet of nature, but might have to travel far for certain services or emergencies. In the end, where people choose to live and how communities form are based on both the land's gifts and the challenges it presents. By understanding these patterns, we can make better decisions for the future, making sure communities are happy, healthy, and safe.